Hi everyone, New England Gardening here inside um, with some fig cuttings I want to start propagating. Uh, better late than never, it's the 7th of May, it's Tuesday, and I have some cuttings here that I've already had in the fridge for about a month. Uh, I've got some I-258, I think they were like Let's see, five or six cuttings in there. And then I have this um, Hatib de Argentile, Argentile. I believe I had this a long time ago when you could get cuttings um, from UC Davis. And I regretted getting rid of it. Um, if I can recall, it was a very slow grower and it was very difficult to root. Um, I had forgotten one video I was watching uh, where the roots, because of the humidity I had, came up bef above the growing medium I was using. And um, I think I already had it in soil at that point, so I had to cut a cup and uh, tape it to the outside to stack it to make it a little bit higher so I could fill it up with more soil. But I recall it was similar to Aishia Black in that um, it got very um, thick and dehydrated and chewy. And the skin, very unusual if I can recall correctly again, it had a, it had a spicy note to it. Uh, it was hard to describe the spice. Um, it was sort of like a... I want to say like a ginger or like a cinnamon. It was, it was, um, I don't know what they call those, those types of spices. Um, but yeah, it had dehydrated, but when I picked it, I believe it had dehydrated and it reminded me because the uh, Shia Black did that. It was the closest thing to those dehydrated fig wheels that you can get, uh, like in the produce department, your local grocery store. A nice seed crunch. I don't recall if these, if this variety had a seed crunch to it. But anyways, I got two cuttings. They were hard to come by, and um, seems to be a popular variety right now. Um, but another thing I wanted to try is uh, a new rooting technique, and that is sand. Uh, in the past, I started off with sphagnum moss. Also, just rolled up newspaper that was supposed to have some antifungal. You know, the ink was supposed to uh, prevent uh, fungus uh, from growing on the cuttings. Um, but went graduated to sphagnum moss, and um, sphagnum moss has a problem with if you don't have really tight seal. Well, you have to air it out anyways, but. It ends up getting gnats a lot of times, or fruit flies, or just any type of fly can make it into the house and into the sphagnum. Um, so this here is a pretty, it's a sterile environment, um, and gnats are not going to want to evidently lay eggs and propagate, have a life cycle in sand. Um, I decided, I was trying to make it difficult at first, I was going to put it in one of these shoe boxes and then I'm like, well, I got two varieties, how am I gonna keep track? And they're gonna be pretty crowded. And what I decided to do was I have this, this tray here uh, and I have a cover that can go on, that goes on this, that fits on this. And I decided to put a heat mat underneath the sand not certain if that's going to be a good idea, but I believe I saw uh, a recommendation either in a video or online to uh, you get faster results if you do have it on a heat mat. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try this method, and this is not a rooting medium. This is you know, you're going to have the the cutting sitting on top of this. It helps create a humid environment with it when you have a top on this. I think I am going to put fluorescent lights on top of this and keep it out of direct sun because then it was going to just get too hot. 
Um, and let's see what happens. Hopefully, um, I can get these to root and get some results. So here are two native IT. I believe in UC Davis they're calling it native Argentile. So I have these two nice size ideal cuttings. And I, like I said, I just had these in the fridge. Um, hmm, now that I'm looking at this, that's not going to work, I don't think. Uh, I might just have to do it visually, but I was wondering how I would make sure that I don't. I could paint the ends, I guess, so a little red on here. Because I don't think this is going to show up and I really can't see with the so I can't really can't see yeah I think that might that might help just have to do I'm going to just identify the two that I have of this native ID Hativ and hopefully, I think I'll be able to identify it from watching the video. But I'm just going to put these on top of the sand, maybe just a little bit in. And uh, mark this one. Yes. So the other I two fifty eights. Pretty large cutting here. Although I've I've had success with large cuttings like this. I wonder if I should just Take a hole and put one outside. So these, not certain what I get out of those, but here's some more ideal size cuttings. Now this, you can see there, even though it was in the fridge, those buds have opened. And that's it. Like I said, I have a... Um, kind of wondering if I should just set these in a little bit. And, oh, so that sand has really distributed the moisture already. I, I had given this a pre-misting, and it was dry underneath, but that was quickly to distribute throughout the sand. And uh, let me show you the top I have for this particular, I don't think this is, this isn't the exact tray. But um, it fits on this. Maybe I'll cut off a corner here for the cable to sit through. Um, so I was thinking of using this. Um, gives me more, a little bit headroom. I, I have this this vent that I can adjust. There was one. Oh, it's still here. Oh, on this side. 
I'm missing. I could just tape that up. I came across that in the cellar somewhere, and I didn't know what it was. I don't think I threw it out. I think I tried to push it back in, and I couldn't. Anyways, I can just tape that up. Uh, I have some plant lights I can just... They're just old um, or unused aquarium lights I can set up on top of this. Again, I'm going to keep it out of direct sun. And I might just cut a notch. Although this worked fine for propagating the plants that I've propagated so far. But yeah, this is a new technique and hopefully won't be dealing with any um, gnats and uh, I'll show you the results. Um, today's Tuesday. I don't expect anything for a month. And I'll keep a close eye on them. I, I think it was fig plant fanatics, maybe. So I was watching a YouTube video, Plant Fanatics. And he recommended this. And it was, it was a new technique to him, too. Um, so this is my first time. I'll give it a try. I do have... I'm kind of wondering if I get the lights closer. I can always go with this shorter one. But yeah, um, I'm going to give this a try and uh, hopefully I'll have good results. So this is New England Gardening on this Tuesday, May 7th, 2024. I-258, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of those, and two, um, Hativ de Argentile, and, um, I'll update you on the progress, so thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, so this is what I have. Um, again, these are just two aquarium lights that I'm not using, so I'll just put them to use. And I did put that notch in the side here for the cables to go through. And because I have a temperature sensor also. And I think I'll put the lights on a timer. Save me some time. Um, don't have to worry about it. Have the lights go on and off. This is a southwest facing windows on the back porch. So I just got get some uh, drapes up so no direct light. And I have it set for 80, but I might I should probably reduce that. Maybe I'll set it to like 75. And uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.